current neutrino scattering and GED energies. Oh, thanks a lot for the introduction, Idan. I would like to say that I know people mainly from the electron neutron scattering community. Neutrino case is slightly different and sometimes more complicated, sometimes less, but uh, there are similarities. And I guess that this, of course, this field uh, con can contribute one to each other. And there is a lot of in common. And I guess that some lessons which I learned doing radiative corrections to neutrino physics can be in the future applied also for electron and neon scattering. I would like to say that this work was motivated mainly by very ambitious goals of future uh, experiments in neutrino physics, in, which are measuring mainly neutrino oscillations. So they are DUNE in the United States and Hyper-K in Japan. These experiments are going to look on the decay of proton. They will wait for an explosion of supernova, and luckily there will be at least one during the time of data taking. But the main goals are to discover or rule out the CP violation phase in the lepton sector and maybe even measure it relatively precisely. And then the other goal is pretty interesting one. These experiments will definitely tell us which neutrino species is the lightest one. And of course, uh, by doing high precision measurements, we can improve on the precision of neutrino oscillation par parameters, which enter the Ponte Coro Machina Cavas Sakata uh, metrics. Uh, I will describe the details on the example of experiment Dune. Neutrinos of mainly muon type are produced in this case at Fermilab, and they are traveling to South Dakota through the Earth, where the people measure either disappearance of muon neutrino type or appearance of electron uh, neutrino type. Measurements are performed at far detectors and at near detectors, and basically comparing rates, it's a simplified picture, we can extract oscillation parameters. Uh, if we also should, besides neutrinos, anti-neutrinos, we are much more sensitive to the CP violating phase. All information is extracted mainly from the number of neutrino inducive bands on nuclear targets. And this number is given as an integral over the neutrino energy of the neutrino flux. In case of neutrinos, it's main difference to electron scattering that flux is not monochromatic in energy. It has, it has quite wide spread. Uh, then times neutrino cross sections on any target we have in our detectors and the response of detector, which it describes how, uh, uh, how our detectors work. And the point is that to have control over uh, appearance and disappearance signals, we have to know precisely all these elements and improve on precision of all of them. And in particular, radiative correction enter how neutrino interacts with a uh, detector. And that's why I uh, uh, play some role here. And today I'm going to discuss just a few projects which are nearly to be accomplished or even completely accomplished. The first of them is radiative corrections to the process of charge current elastic scattering from nucleons. In this case, for instance, neutrino scatters on neutron produces negatively charged lepton and proton, or the other uh, process can be anti-neutrino scatters on proton and produces charged lepton and, uh, and neutron. Of course, we know uh, that all charged particles can couple to photons. That's why they can be radiation, mainly from lepton lines, but also from nucleon lines, and they can be exchange of photons between leptons, protons, and neutrons. And I will describe our calculation, which I think the only one complete calculation uh, which uh, and consistent, which accounts correctly for long distance uh, phenomena and also cancels correctly infrared piece. Besides this, uh, I'm going to answer the question, uh, what happens to cross-sections and to our expected event rates due to the exchange of photons from charged lepton before it leaves the nucleus? The point that after hard scattering happens, there can be exchange of photons, of course, mainly with protons, but mainly basically with charge distribution inside of the nucleus. I will describe it in case of neutrinos and maybe <laughs> which is of interest for uh, community here, we'll generalize it also to the case for electron nucleus scattering. If there is time and interest, there are a few backup slides which we can also discuss regarding some other projects. So let us take a look how neutrinos uh, show up in modern experiments. 
So when neutrino hit any target, uh, either new particles produced uh, or this just targets recoils and neutrino goes away. The point is that as we already know, all charged particles can radiate real photons and uh, can exchange also visual photons between charged particles. Such corrections we have here, charge charge, charge squared, loop corrections also have always one over pi factor. So they are suppressed, they should be per mu level. That's why, why should we care about such radiative corrections at all? But the point is that the, the factor which goes after alpha over pi depends on the kinematics and neutrino experiments as well as electron proton scattering experiments discussed here today and uh, modern electron proton experiments at Mines and JLabs, they have separation of scales. Mass of electron is much smaller. online hear us ah. yes okay all right we're going to try this again okay okay sorry about that i will continue from this slide i will remind that i was talking that uh predictive corrections can be as large as 10 20 percent for electron flavor and uh, in case of exclusive observables, in case of inclusive, can reach a few percent level. But the point is that uh, since there is log of mass of electron for such kind of calculation, then uh, corrections depend on the flavor of lepton. 
and will be very different for electrons and muons. And since the uh, measure electron neutrino signal as appearance and, and muon neutrino signal and disappearance and control over this uh, cross sections is uh, very important. And that's why we need to quantify in detail these corrections. And I will start from the process like electron proton scattering, but instead of electron neutrino scatters, uh, which I already discussed, and we'll describe results of our previous, our recent publications. Uh, why do we care about this process? First of all, uh, it's a basic process of so called uh, charge current with the elastic uh, process inside the nucleus. Which shown here at QE. And on this plot, I show cross section divided by the neutrino energy as function of the neutrino energy with different mechanisms which contribute to the cross section and ranges of experiments hyper K and experiment Dune. The point that for the elastic region is pretty important for hyper K and also for Dune. That's why it makes sense to study it in detail. Also, this uh, process serves as process for the reconstruction of the neutrino energy. Let us take a deeper look on this simple process. It's two to two process and as any two to two process, also as electron proton scattering, muon proton scattering, it depends on two kinematic variables, neutrino energy and the momentum transfer. At GV energies of experiments and below, uh, this interaction is described by contact interaction since we can integrate out all electroweak contributions, but in blob, we have form factors. And to describe it precisely, we know analytically vertex, electronic vertex of uh, charge current for leptons, while proton uh, vertex is described by the matrix element of this quark operator. This matrix element can be decomposed in terms of four form factors, two vector ones and two XL ones, which appear in neutrino physics. These two vector form factors are related to Dirac and Pauli form factors measured in electron proton and electron nucleus scattering. And also uh, to some information is extracted from atomic spectroscopy. While XL and pseudoscalar form factors are accessed only uh, in, okay, in neutrino scattering or by some other uh, model dependent assumption in action on electron. Uh, good. Can people online hear us? Nope. Either hear us. Yes. yes. I can hear. You can uh, hear now. Can you see? Yeah. I can Where see. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Having this expression for helicity amplitude, we can of course calculate unpolarized cross section and all people who work with neutrino, neutrinos, know this expression almost by heart. Uh, the cross section is expressed in three structure dependent ABC parameters, which are functions of just one momentum transfer variable. And they're expressed in terms of form factor in this way. And other two uh, parameters are in tau are just kinematics here. I would like to point on two lessons from this expression. The first one is regarding so-called induced pseudoscalar form factor. It enters all cross-section with m squared term. Either it's mass of lepton divided by two mass of nucleon squared or mass of lepton squared divided by neutrino energy squared. That's why its contribution is definitely negligible for electron types of neutrinos, but also for muon type of neutrinos around GV energies, we can safely neglect it. And the other important point that both XL and vector form factor enter with similar coefficients. That's why knowledge of both of them is very important for neutrino scattering cross sections. And right now, since we take vector form factors from electron scattering or from atomic, with some pieces from atomic spectroscopy, we uh, limited by knowledge of this process due to the XL form factor. The main data is pretty old and not very detailed, it comes mainly from three experiments. There are around 3,000 of events. There are quite a lot of analysis of this data. And uh, what I would like to say is that, of course, it's great to produce neutrino deuteron scattering in the future, while deuteron heavy 
nuclei because when then nuclear correction seems to be under control. But here I would like to point that there are also alternative ways to extract axial form factor. And fortunately, quite soon in the future, we will see publications from Fermilab experiments on this quantity by completely alternative method. Okay, uh, so we have uh, this process. I would say that uh, knowledge of cross-sections is of order right now 10, 20%. Why should we care about radiative corrections? Because in some cases they be as huge as 10, 20% is the first point. And the second point in case of oscillation experiments, we have beam of mainly muon neutrino types and muon neutrino cross-sections can be in principle measured at near detectors, near production of neutrinos. While for electron neutrinos cross-sections, we don't have enough data to disentangle flux cross-sections at near detectors, and we need theoretical inputs to relate electron neutrino cross-sections and muon neutrino cross-sections. And such large logarithms can, should, should be taken, of course, under control. And as a first step to account for these logarithms, we perform calculation in the so-called static limit. When we consider nucleon as infinitely heavy particle, and the energy of incoming left neutrino in this case and final left is much smaller than mass of the nucleon and also uh, mass, we, we consider massless limit. This calculation, but not strictly massless particles. This calculation is, uh, provides us correctly all logarithmic, double logarithmic and logarithmic enha enhancement and which is the main part of radiative corrections. And here I show the results of cross-section divided by leading order cross-section as function of the neutrino energy. This is cross-section integrated over all angles. So it's not distribution. Uh, for when first, if I include all radiated photons up to 20 MeV into observable, I have this blue line. We, have, we see double logarithmic enhancement, which is much larger for uh, electron flavor than for the muon flavor. Then if we consider electrons, they radiate mainly in the direction of uh, uh, electron. And we can account also for this collinear radiation and experiment dictates us that reasonable size of cones is, can be around of order, I would say 10 degrees. And then since radiation, uh, cross-section of real radiation is always positive number and they radiate mainly in the direction of electron propagation, we have huge cancellation of virtual versus real and corrections uh, become much smaller. Uh, in, okay, yeah. in known case, this radiation is slightly different, but I will discuss later. Then if you add also radiation of hard photons, uh, all possible photons allowed by kinematics, in such a model, we can do it precisely. We obtain something of percent level effect and we have flavor independent correction, which is also the same for neutrino and anti-neutrino. Of course, it's first approximation and one can go better, but before this, let's look how electrons and muons radiate. So here I show a distribution of uh, uh, radiation uh, with respect to angle to the direction of uh, uh, final lepton. In case of electrons, due to very small mass of electron compared to energy scales, we have radiation mainly in the direction of electron with forward peak uh, and uh, quite not, not so many radiation goes outside this forward peak. Plus are shown here for the fixed energy of electron and lepton and uh, photon, but basically fixed electromagnetic energy in the jet. In case of muons, due to mass, pretty large mass of muon, the radiation uh, doesn't go mainly in the direction of muon, but has slightly shifted peak. And it's, this peak is uh, basically uh, slightly, uh, yeah, since, since we have slightly shifted peak uh, and also experimental resolution for muon jets is slightly smaller, we do not consider in this talk collinear uh, muon jets in detail. But for electron type of observables, we always include uh, collinear radiation. Uh, in future, I would say that uh, there can be spectrometer in neutrino experiments, and one can, of course, disentangle collinear and soft radiation. So that's why both types of calculation are of interest. But besides this simple uh, le leading approximation, we can go one step farther. And uh, the 
nice way to do it is to use factorization framework. The point that we have nice scale separation between mass of electron, uh, mass of muon and cutoff of soft pattern energy, and mass of proton with energy scale of the experiment. It allows us to, to write a factorization formula. Uh, approximately, it's a, just a broad, it, approximately at one loop level, it's just a product of soft collinear and hard function. Soft function describes soft region of virtual diagrams and also soft radiation of soft photons. Collinear function describes collinear region of virtual diagrams and the radiation of photons along directions of leptons. And hard function describes physics at GV scale. In QED applications, soft and collinear functions can be calculated analytically, and we have done this calculation. Basically, soft function is universal for many processes. It was known before, but for collinear function, we did it for this process. Yeah. And then for hard function, uh, Unfortunately, we have to rely on some modeling because GV scale is not perturbative QCD. Also, chiral perturbation theory doesn't work at such high energies. And we try to use as much as possible expertise from electron and proton and muon proton scattering community. And for, to do this calculation, we consider these virtual diagrams as start, starting point. Uh, when lepton connected to the proton, uh, and lepton of course can change also photon with neutron. Such kind of calculation, I guess just this part was de described in recently when people plug in from factors in the same type of calculation many, one, many of you know here well. Uh, this calculation does not reproduce correctly infrared uh, part of these diagrams. And to describe also infrared part, we add on top self energies of uh, lepton and proton, uh, but we need actually mainly just infrared pieces of the self energies. Moreover, this calculation does not reproduce collinear region correctly. And we modify this calculation by modifying this electroweak vertices, vertices. And our main guiding principle is to reproduce correctly collinear region of virtual diagrams and collinear radiation. Besides this, if you con consider this calculation, it's not gauge invariant. In our case, we have found two solutions to this pro problem, either modify uh, self energies in a suitable way or uh, just fix gauge and, and uh, perform extraction of form factor for not only for the fixed, in this case, MS bar scale, but also for the fixed gauge. The model dependence due to this uh, uh, fixing of gauge and due to choice of uh, self energy is of order of alpha over pi. And most important that it cancels in the flavor ratio of electron over muon. Uh, cross sections. So at the end, we reproduce uh, soft and collinear regions, and it's the main guiding principle to determine hard function. We do it at hard scale. To account for large perturbative logarithms, we uh, solve for a normalization group equation uh, and uh, run hard function to lower energy scales and perform calculations at low energy scales. And of course, where I it's both types of scales for uncertainty estimates. But besides, uh, before going to final results, I would like to, to discuss uncertainties, which we include in this modeling. And the first source of uncertainty, of course, uh, we have some three-level form factors. Uh, and the three-level form factors we take from parameterization, that expansion parameterization for XL form factor, and reason parameterization for vector form factor, which actually also takes muonic hydrogen result as uh, input as one of the data points. Uh, the advantage of this parameterization is that they have provide also covariance metrics and we can easily propagate uncertainties to any uh, observable we are looking at. Besides this, we perform this model calculation. We have form factors here in this vertex actually, which we take in dipole form with some parameter lambda, which is good approximation for first type of calculation. And we write this uh, parameter lambda or, okay, la or lambda squared, I don't remember right now, but by 10% uh, we, to cover range of accessible uh, form factors from electron scattering. Besides this, we account for possible uncertainty due to inelastic intermediate states. And for this, we take this diagram, this neutron ex photon exchange with neutron as 
uncertainty for uh, inelastic intermediate states, but to be symmetric, we also add contribution when we vary proton form factors by neutron form factors and add also this, this type of uh, uncertainty since inelastic states can be excited, of course, here. I would like to point that this uncertainty estimate doesn't include properly cases when the incoming energy is uh, very close to the resonance peak. Uh, but the main point that uncertainty, the ratio of such uncertainties uh, uh, of, for instance, result after radiative corrections to three level, uh, in such a ratio, uncertainty is very small because uh, the leading order form factor rate uncertainty cancels exactly. And the main point that exactly factorization framework and decomposition into soft collinear and hard regions had allowed us to achieve this level of uh, precision, which is of per mil level. Now I would like to go to describe possible observables. The first ones, of course, are exclusive observables. The first line, when we include only soft photons below 10 MeV into our observable, but we can include arbitrary number of soft photons. Plus are shown for 2 GeV neutrino energy as the function of the momentum transfer, basically Q squared zero is forward, Q squared 1.5 it's some angle, not exactly backward. Uh, why we stop here? Because if you go to higher momentum transfers, the cross-section, three-level cross-section by itself is already very small. It's mainly in the forward direction. Uh, so uh, we, we see that uh, this, again, we see the double logarithmic terms. In case if we add also collinear radiation, there is huge cancellation and inserted in correction is of percent, percent level. Uh, for illustration, I show uncertainty of three level from factors of three level cross section as deviation from unity by this dashed curve. So basically this, how well do we know three level and the uh, ratio of uh, radiatively corrected up to three level is known with very small uncertainty, which is also in this plots just undistinguishable. In uh, experiments with uh, neutrinos, we interested on ratio of electron over muon cross sections. At leading order, this ratio deviates just by a few percent from one. When we account only on soft photons, we have like 10% uncertainty, but when we account on top also for collinear photons for electron flavor, and no uh, radiation for muon flavor, we obtain uh, this dashed uh, curve and percent level uh, correction. Besides this, uh, exclusive observables, when we have cuts on the final state electron, we consider also inclusive observables. And up to now, in neutrino experiments, uh, mainly inclusive observables are uh, considered. So for this case, we have to model also radiation of photons but for these two diagrams. And what we do, we just take the same model as for virtual diagrams to model real radiation. Uh, basically, it's, it, then if you take this model, this real radiation is gauge invariant by itself and uh, uh, also reproduces correctly, of course, soft and collinear regions of photons. Uh, so we add this hard radiation and integrate over all kinematics. And here I show again radiative correction uh, ratio of corrected cross-section over leading order result. The first point I would like to stress are recurves. And these recurves are, correspond to different type of spectra or different definition of Q squared in the experiment. So it's always defined from the difference of neutrino energy and one of other energies in the experiment. It can be just final lepton energy. In this case, we have quite big uh, and so big uh, correction with relatively uh, controlled uncertainty. It can be also uh, energy of uh, final lepton and photon. It's not what measured in experiment definitely, but it provides us good like basis for many theoretical cross checks. In this case, correction is very close to one. And the most realistic case is when we determine uh, Q squared from the energy of jet or energy of electron and photon within 10 degrees to electron direction uh, in case of electron flavor and no, uh, no photons in case of muon flavor. So uh, this is result for ratio to three level. This is result for flavor ratio. 
The main point that on such kind of ratios, leading order uncertainties cancel significantly, and our calculations provide the way to uh, make precise predictions for electron over muon cross section ratio. Besides distributions, we also took a look on uh, inclusive cross sections, fully inclusive cross section, and it's interesting to see how radiative corrections, large or not large, compared to uncertainties of three level uh, result. So here I show a table for first for photon neutrino energies. One of the, them is 600 MeV. It's peak of T2K experiment. And the other is 2 GeV. It's not peak, but very close to peak of Fermilab-based NOVA experiment and future Dune experiment. And uh, this ratio is shown for neutrinos and antineutrinos as deviation from one. Uh, Three level uncertainty is just propagation of uncertainties from uh, nucleon form factors. And uh, the, other, the other uncertainty which I show here, we just very conservatively write uncertainty of uh, radiative corrections. But the main point is that radiative corrections by themselves are much larger than hadronic uncertainties of, uh, or on the level of this ratio. The other interesting point is uh, uh, to see that uh, ratio, flavor ratio basically is determined by kinesheta Lee-Namberg theorem, uh, which tells that there can be no logarithmic singularity on after integration over sufficiently inclusive kinematics. It's completely inclusive cross sections there cannot be. That's why the leading term in the expansion starts from uh, mass squared, but radiative corrections can introduce mass squared times log mass term, and we basically cross-check this. It works well for our model, which we provide, but for previous model, when you just put on factors and do not do these modifications, it doesn't work. So that's why it works a lot in favor of our calculation. Besides this, we studied how nuclear physics changes these ratios. And we studied how binding energy effects inside nuclei changes these ratios, how Fermi motion of nucleons inside nucleus it changes this ratio and how Pauli blocking effects can change the ratio. Of the point that, nevertheless, for instance, Pauli blocking effect can change cross sections by 10 or even 30 uh, percent. Uh, on the level of this flavor ratio, the, these changes are even within uncertainty of hadronic physics. So the, this uh, nuclear effects cancel very explicitly. The other interesting point is to see after the calculation of radiative corrections how they are comparable with experimental data. And for this, we embed uh, our calculation into nuclei. It's for hydrocarbon for all these experiments and for argon for Dune, right? both in case of neutrino mode and anti-neutrino mode, and we integrate over flux of incoming neutrinos. Uh, in this case, we take all events which see at the final, in final state neutrino and arbitrary number of nucleons. Uh, we determine kinematics from the lepton lag, but uh, for radiative correction, we take uh, this kind of experimental, uh, this kind of definition of uh, momentum transfer. The point here is that radiative corrections can be pretty large. And of course, uh, this was to produce this plot, some generator was used. It was new generator, but uh, it doesn't matter too much which generator to use because we show effect of radiative corrections, not of nuclear physics. Nevertheless, nuclear physics effects are different between generators. We found that for different generators, these effects are almost the same. And now I would like to show results on example of experimental data. This is experimental data of Minerva experiment at Fermilab. A Minerva experiment was dedicated to measurements of and studies of neutrino nucleus cross sections at GV energy range. And these particular plots are from so called low energy flux mode, this peak of neutrino flux around 3.5 GV. Uh, what is shown here? It's uh, shown for neutrino mode and for anti neutrino mode. Distribution with respect to final, basically, you have the final state lepton. It has two projections of its momentum in beam direction and perpendicular to beam direction. Its distribution with respect to perpendicular beam direction as function of this perpendicular momentum, but for the beam in the longitudinal direction of the muon for this beam. And we see that, okay, for this low energy mode, radiative corrections, some 
some can be uh, of order of uh, experimental precision and of order of deviations between generator and uh, experimental data. In case of other med so-called medium energy flux, we speak around six, seven GV, we can see that indeed radiative corrections are pretty important and it, it looks like they even help to describe data slightly better uh, for, in this case, we take slightly different binning in uh, lepton uh, that, that direction. Great, we have also model for hard photon radiations and we can play with this model. And the first question we have answered is uh, how often do we misreconstruct uh, muon neutrino events as electron neutrino events? Basically, if you have sufficiently hard photon in the direction of muon, and muon uh, energy is slightly small, many detectors can consider this event as electron type of as electron as electron type. And for various criteria, we found up to 10 minus four probability of such flavor of misidentification. Criteria are described in the papers, I don't go into detail. The other interesting point is to see how much do we have hard non-collinear photons. Basically, we mainly are, sensitive to collinear photons inside the lepton direction, but there are photons outside the lepton direction. And right now we show how huge this cross section compared to three level result. There are three curves here. Uh, they are for different soft photon energy cutoffs, but for the same cone size of electron. And question for the audience, lowest curve for which number of uh, soft photon energy cutoff corresponds? Can one answer? So this curve is for which soft photon energy cut. So there are three curves, one of for one for 20, 40, and 80. The lowest one is for 20. No, no. It's 80. <laughs> because you have then less hard collinear photons, you don't have more soft photons. But yeah, it's okay. Uh, and uh, so 80, 40, 20. And the point here is that three these blue curves or uh, curves solid dashed and dotted are for our default model calculation and the calculation when you just pick in four factors or uh, do all the type of calculation these are three red curves and i would like to say that uh, uh, this uh, uncertainty can describe how bad was the model this difference can describe how bad was the model and in principle further studies uh, based on such deviations can be done for also for electron scattering community. Okay, thank you for uh, listening to the first part of the talk. Now the second part. <laughs> <laughs> now we go to nuclei and see how leptons uh, radiate photons with nuclear medium. The point that hard scattering happens after hard scattering ha happens in some particular nucleon. Uh, final state lepton exchange photons, either is uh, neutrons, but mainly with protons because protons have charge one, and we consider at the end on the charge distribution of the proton calculation. Uh, but the point is that this exchange of photons can distort cross section, and in case of uh, studies of jet modification in nucleus nucleus collision, such distortions are pretty huge, up to 20 and even 50 percent. That's why it was interesting to see what QED can do here. Uh, there is some expertise from heavy nuclei, and uh, that's why uh, we follow this expertise. The easiest way to derive uh, such effects is to use, of, uh, to use effective field series. Uh, after hard scattering happens, we have exchange of soft photons with final state, of photons with final state lepton, and such kind of exchange happens mainly in forward direction, and uh, final state lepton does not deviate. We can know it without just from our basic courses from mod formula expression when we have one over q squared suppressions uh, it tells us that all physics goes mainly in the forward direction so the, the appropriate effective field theory should deal correctly with uh, forward uh, integrate with uh, forward kinematics and this effective field theory is called soft collinear effective field theory extended by glauber photons the point that exchange photons between uh, nucleons inside nucleus and final state lepton uh, have the, 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 such kind of scaling of momenta perpendicular to the lepton direction momentum is the dominant one while okay p plus or p minus or 
Z component and time component are suppressed. Also, since we work with GV energies, uh, when masses of lepton are much smaller than uh, energy of experiment, the very good first approximation is to consider final state collinear uh, particles with uh, known scaling of momentum. This calculation is relatively easy. It gives this analytic expression, actually. But if you want to work with neutrinos of hundreds of MeV energy, which is pretty often, or want to generalize it to the case of muon proton scattering for like hundreds of MeV, uh, we have to take care of mass of muon. We cannot use collinear fields. And we perform, besides just a CT type of calculation, we have performed full QED calculation without uh, both this approximation. It's slightly more involved, uh, but uh, it's done. Uh, so result uh, and leading uh, effect is given by integral along the line of final state lepton, basically along this line of charge distribution inside the nucleus. And here we have integral in the momental space of difference between two cross sections. One cross section, for one cross section, this uh, final state momentum is shifted by exchange of this global photon, and the other cross section is just cross section of the hard process. Besides this, there is Coulomb, there is potential of this exchange to photon here, and in case of Coulomb potential, we have infrared divergence, which means something is going wrong. There should be some regularization. Uh, for the regularization, we take such kind of form, and uh, the question is when, where to regularize our potential. We have chosen to regularize it at atomic scale. The reason for this, the reason for this at atomic scale, uh, outside atoms, we do not see what's going on inside nucleus. Uh, below, and of course, electrons uh, fill a field of protons inside the nucleus. Uh, after the results are shown here for atomic scale and for uh, slightly larger in coordinate space scale where there is no electric field. Uh, the results shown for carbon nucleus and for argon nucleus in case of neutrinos of 2 GV energy, the distortion of cross sections is small, very small. It barely reaches per mil level. But I would say that this effects parametrically is of alpha squared. And due to large separation of scales between uh, atomic scale and nuclear physics scale, there is logarithmic enhancement that it can reach up to per mil level. Also, it's flavor independent, and but probably will be not so important in neutrinos. Uh, for in case of anti, uh, yeah, and if you integrate over kinematics, uh, it's even much smaller effect from fusion sections. For anti neutrinos, it's slightly larger because steeper kinematic dependence of anti neutrino cross section. Uh, anti neutrino cross sections. Besides this, we generalize our calculations for case of electrons. In this case, in a CTG framework, we just have to add integral now along incoming electron or muon up to hard interaction happens of some slightly differently shifted by kinematics cross section. Uh, and we also provided effective field theory and full uh, calculation. Uh, and it turns out that uh, in this case, effect is also always positive. It reaches, it's shown here for carbon argon nucleus, it can reach easily uh, per, uh, a few per mil level effect at relatively forward angles, and it increases and reaches percent level and even above going to backward angles. I, I think that it's pretty critical effects for extraction of form factors and charge radii of nuclei. Unfortunately, of course, it will be interesting to see what happens with protons, but for protons, we cannot directly apply this calculation, which can do just extrapolation because picture of proton and then exchange of photons with other nucleons is not correct by definition. That's why I will just slightly speculate and provide sign of effect and relative and talk about relative size. I will remind that there are different ways for extraction of charge radius, you know them pretty well. And in case of electron scattering, recently there was PIRAD measurement, which gave much smaller result compared to measurement from uh, electron proton scattering. And uh, if I analyze, uh, basically, I do not work right now with data, I have generated some pseudo data at low momentum transfer region. And I have found that in all cases, this nuclear QD nuclear medium effects reduce 
uh, account for QD nuclear medium effects reduce charge radii, uh, and it reduces charge radii less for higher energies of electron beam. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I have found that possible effects can be quite huge of order of not maybe whole discrepancy, but more than experimental precision. And it calls for, of course, more theoretical investigation of how this effect should be extrapolated to protons and uh, for future data analysis. Now I would like to thank you. And uh, I described radiative corrections to neutrino nucleon scattering in the factorization framework. Uh, this framework had allowed us to provide very precise prediction of uh, uh, radiative corrections uh, compared to leading order cross section, and especially what's important uh, for flavor electron over muon flavor ratios. And we have formulated QED nuclear medium effect and have found just very small up to per mil level effects in neutrino scattering, but uh, per mil to percent level effects in case of electron nucleus scattering. Uh, thanks for your attention, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.